mine too, bro. So I'm gonna keep it how I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna share, you know, split the spoils how I do because I came across your work initially because I was going into a whole two pack um uncovering. I don't know, man. I just went through some spiritual revelations myself and Pac was very relevant and present. And um, you know, even at that time, my partner, she was like, Boy, when are you gonna let this brother rest, man? When are you gonna let this brother Pac rest? Because you're just constantly, you know delving into certain spaces and places to uncover stuff. But during that time, I came across a video of yours, which was um, Tupac Murder Confessions. And that's, mm. how I, that's how I came across your work, you know, initially. So I had nothing to do with psychedelics or anything like that. It was just me doing my Tupac Googles, man. And I'm like, Tupac Murder Confessions? And mm. then even today, I banged it today because I haven't listened to it in quite a while. So I thought, let me bang it again today. And I was like, oh, shit, man. the brother was like, you, 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 um, you dropped a, a gem, you know, with the, with the track itself. And then I realised that I think you inspired a few other people to do various renditions of the track in a certain way as well later on down the line. Definitely, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to start there, bro. Just what was that two-pack murder confession track about? What inspired you to put that together? And yeah, man, yeah. Please, please share more. Well, um, you know, just a bit, a bit of background. I've always been very... Uh, I guess just the allure and the overall fear and the unescapable curiosity of what death is, is something that's been plaguing me, you know, since I was a child, I've always been, even, I didn't even start getting into uh, even marijuana until I was in my mid twenties. So, you know, but I, I used to, and the reason why is because I used to, uh, I used to just naturally hallucinate when I was a kid, like anytime I get a fever over a hundred, I would, I, I, I go to sleep and it's like, I would fear going to sleep because I'd wake up and the world was just different, you know? And I used to have these haunting dreams that were just not, they're not, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to be afraid of because it's like, I don't know, dreams of cellular division or something, these weird just images. And so I've always been you know, when I look into the darkness, I look deep into it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. this has just been a practice since I was a kid. So when, as I grew up and I realized what Tupac and, and Biggie represented, um, it's, you realize that you have these Christ figures on every, on every level within every realm of, of, of skill set of, every world has its Christ figure. It, it, um, these these almost sacrificial lambs of God that that kind of push the direction of a certain um, mindset or or artistic endeavor. If if nature didn't have these uh, wrinkles, nothing ever new would prosper out of. There would be no mutation or no natural evolution. If somehow the storyline wasn't played out in certain people. It has to be played out in every possible way. You have to have this kind of Godhead. And the more you go into it and you realize that, wait, this guy, Tupac, his career was only a couple years long. He was only 25 when he died. How could, and, and you know, his, his, it's not like he, he had this huge music, his musical discography came out after his death as, as mm -hmm. but it wasn't like he had Michael Jackson level musical impact. It was really as a person, this, this revolutionary figure and his impact just kind of bled through everything. And, and that's more powerful than, than just music. So when it came down to me, arca, you know, kind of conceptualizing the song, the original idea was for me to represent death in hip hop as a whole, and for me to connect all the deaths in hip hop. And um, knew that two the death weren't so I would really be you know, in the lives and people's families that may not, you know, if I go into Big L or Big Pun or Aaliyah or or any of these people that might be too sensitive for for not only for me but for the families and the fans that you know may have been dealing with this but Tupac his story has been investigated talked about I mean it was on Unsolved Mysteries Netflix documentaries so there was a lot of a lot of material for me to um, source 
uh, study and reference. But once I got into it, I realized how metaphysically impactful this was. Like the, the ramifications of his life story go are biblical by far. I couldn't fit everything into that song because obviously when you're writing a song, I have to stay in rhythmic balance. I have to stay within the, the bar schemes. I have to rhyme. I have to make it, I have to thread the storyline. And I also don't want to become redundant. So, but what I realized through the process of creating this song, which the writing process took me about from beginning to end, about three weeks. First couple of weeks, just resources, resourcing and gathering the words, the, the vernacular, getting his storyline down and then being able to weave myself into it um, by using factual vision as if I was really there. Um, I just knew like, you know, when I first started rapping, I knew that in order for, to, for me to consider myself great or a master of my skill set, there were things that I had to do, which are these heavy conceptual storylines. Like you're not a dope rapper if you don't have a story track. You're not a dope rapper if you haven't done you know, a, a seven minute song, you know, this is just my thinking. So okay. I, I just have kind of like this bucket list of concepts that if I nail them down, I, it'll be on, it'll be undeniable. And that was definitely one of the first real big concepts I pushed out. And it was scary, man. I started that, that whole process was, I, it was like opening Pandora's box because I believe it, like I had connections in the industry before that song that never spoke to me again after I put that song out. You know, um, my Grammy passed shortly after that. Um, Tupac was also born on the day of my uncle, who was like my, my main father figure. Um, right. And um, uh, Asses Malone did his rendition of it. And it's like, he actually had the, the money and the machine behind him to get this song, his, ver his rendition of the murder of Tupac and get down on Breakfast Club, never mentioned me. And I know he's aware of me, you know, I know that that's what this hip, this industry is. But the people that I know knows where that, that idea was originally attempted. Um, but yeah, sure. it's something that I had to do. And, and it's something that, you know, things like that are things that I have to continue doing because there's a truth that comes out with rhyme. When you're when you're putting together these these codexes, these rhyming codexes, these algorithms, you're able to pull down the truth out of the records. It's 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 much deeper than just some guys rapping and bippity bopping. This is the this is the holy tongue. This is the tower of Bob, tower of Babel. And rhyming is a mathematic sequential ceiling. It it makes it makes sense more. Imagine if the if the Bible rhymed, it would have more mathematical sequence to it and that's what i'm realizing so it's like oh man you know but that's that's basically the background behind tupac it was just i'm, I'm always in the dark i'm somebody who i'm a depressed person and i just you know i i i i like to be awake when everyone's sleeping you know got you got you got you and um i don't know what what you know what what or who are the musical influences, you know, obviously you mentioned Tupac and Biggie, but on being where you are in the world and, you know, coming from that depressive <laughs> um, angle, dark taboo side, because for me, like a lot of the artists that I'm inspired by are not basically well recognized like yourself, you know, it'd be like all the people that are banging. <laughs> so who, 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 who was you banging? Who was you motivated by? 